work that you've done to organize this um, session, uh, Bertha, and as well the Minority Affairs Committee. I also want to acknowledge my um, very esteemed um, co-panelists. It's really a privilege for me to be on this panel uh, with them, and um, you all will have a chance to see that in motion. I was asked to present for about 45 minutes, and I'll plan to do that. If, I, if I'm running a little long on time, please let me know. I think I'll be fine. Since this is a workshop, I do want to make sure that it's kind of a teaching experience, so feel free to ask questions along the way, especially questions of clarification. And then we, I've also included a couple of questions that I'd like to present to you all at the end, either for, the, either for discussion or for us to think about as we move through the rest of the conference. Um, and then finally, what I'm, let's see if I can do this. So part of the challenge of studying anything racial is that we bring, everyone already has experiences and perceptions about things like race, ethnicity, racism. And those inform the work that we do or the new conversations, how we understand the new conversations that we have. What I'd like to ask you to do is sort of suspend that to the extent you can and just try to listen to what it is I'm sharing with you, which I'll be sharing from a critical race perspective. Much of it might sound familiar, and maybe perhaps even all of it sounds familiar to you, um, but I just want to put that out there as a way of sort of signaling, let's sort of stop and open and try to hear for nuanced um, meanings in, in what we're talking about in terms of race and ethnicity. So there are four learning objectives. Um, by the end of this presentation, you should be able to explain what, quote, race as a social construct, unquote, means. Um, you should be able to differentiate the attributional and the relational dimensions of ethnicity. You should be able to offer a definition of racism, and you should be able to list at least two challenges to studying racism and health. So, <clears throat> for people concerned about um, health disparities, the, I believe this is actually a really important time to really delve into thinking about racism, as actually was already raised today, thinking about things like racism explicitly in the study, in the research that we do within public health and epidemiology. And public health has a long history of being concerned with racism. So on the one hand, we see that the literature on racism has grown exponentially over the last couple of decades. On the other hand, we cannot deny that that work is we were able to do that work in part because people have always been doing work around racism, even if they haven't called it that, right? So in my mind, I think about public health social justice orientation more broadly. And for me, what inspires me is I think about the public health nurses, for instance, and I have my own vision of them, you know, running out into distant rural neighborhoods, whether or not they were getting paid sufficiently to ensure that families were receiving vaccinations so I think it's important to tap into that because sometimes the study of racism can feel very academic and it's important to connect it to the social justice element of public health and also to recognize that there are real implications for people's lives. Another reason why it's important to think about, um, to study racism and public health has to do with measurement. So science is at its essence about measurement. Are you trying to advance the slide? No, oh. I'm trying to advance my notes. <laughs> okay. 
So um, part of why it's important to study racism health is because if we do not, we will actually be missing an important way that um, we will be missing the contributions of a particular set of mechanisms, those tied to racism. So we will miss the ways that racism might ex you know, directly be involved. So we might think about the importance of directly assessing racism effects. But we'll also misestimate non-racial factors because we will not have accounted for or understood or acknowledged the contributions that racism might make to those point estimates, right, or to those estimates. So whether we are concerned with racism in particular or we're concerned with other outcomes or other uh, factors, we really need to understand this important dimension of social life if we're going to um, be able to accurately and precisely explain the ways that social context and social So this is probably a tension. Should epidemiologists even want to take action? Or is it enough simply to produce um, studies and papers about these various relationships? I would say, from a critical race perspective, ultimately we do this work because we ourselves want to take action, or we want to provide solid evidence so that other, others can take action to improve the health of um, social and marginalized Okay, so if we think about epidemiology in terms of surveillance and etiology, or like its primary um, purposes, then we can think about the importance of correctly, um, the importance of understanding and addressing race, ethnicity, and racism in terms of conceptualization and measurement, because it's important for correctly specifying the populations of interest, right? So how do we know that we have the precise sort of abstract populations of interest, if the tools that we use to measure those populations or to, or to define them are not well assessed. Um, also for capturing relevant risk factors. In terms of etiology, we want to sort of understand what I call the social etiology leading to health disparities, understanding the mechanisms by which racism contributes to health outcomes, and moving beyond proxy measures such as race even if we think of it as a proxy, to try to understand the underlying root causes. And there are implications for those of us who identify as social epidemiologists, those of us who identify as health equity researchers, and those of us who are really concerned with health, health equity interventions. I want to start by talking about race. And I want to just talk first through, very quickly, the official approach to assessing race. Then I want to shift gears and think about how can we think about assessing race as a social construct and talk about some of the implications of that. Okay, so how many of you already know how to assess race using the standard Office of Management and Budget categories? How many of you do not? Okay. So um, these are the standard categories we have, and you all need to know this because I'm sure whatever projects you're funded to do will require you to use them. Um, when you're collecting data on race and ethnicity, white, black, or African American, American Indian, or Alaska Native, Asian, Hawaiian, or Pacific Islander, or other race. There are many critiques written about the use of these particular categories and how we can use them slightly differently, and a number of things, and I'm not going to go into that here today. I just want to highlight what, what they are. Um, and then there are further categories of, for instance, under the Pacific Islander, we see Native Hawaiian, um, Guamanian, Samoa, and other Pacific Islander, and the Asian category um, broken out further by national origin. And race is considered separately from ethnicity, and in the United States, there are only two ethnicities folks. Either you're Spanish, Hispanic, or Latino, or you're not, okay? So there aren't Cajuns, Creoles, Amish. Uh, there are only two official ethnicity categories. And then we can think further in terms of ethnicity of the groups who, are, who represent the greatest share of the um, Latino population in the U.S., folks with Mex Mexican ancestry, who 
Puerto Rican ancestry, Cuban and ancestry. So typically when we think about how do we define race, we don't think about, we think of it as sort of, it's some, a characteristic of individuals, right? Perhaps a characteristic of groups. Um, it's typically based on phenotypes, so we look at people and assume that even if we can't exactly say what race is, that we'll know it when we see it, right? <laughs> um, but race changes over time, right? So if we look at just the census, we know that, for instance, people who might be counted as African American today could have been called black at one point in time. The society changes the definition, and then I myself might change the definition. Why does that matter? Because with those changes in definition come real changes in what those, how I live those differences in the labels. It's not just about the labels, but the real implications that come with them. The, def the definitions can change across contexts. So in one context, I might see myself as Mexican. In another context, I might see myself as American. In another context, I might see myself as Mexican American. Um, and those differences, in co all at the same time, all at the same cross-section of time, but those different sets, senses of identity have real implications for how I operate in that particular social context. Shonda? Yes. I will add also, um, and we're getting a mic set up, okay. but, um, but I will add that, you know, for epidemiologists, we're all about data. And so the first time that I was encountered with something like this was when a, a colleague of mine actually said, she's Puerto Rican, um, but she said, I, when I fill out a, a survey, I don't check Hispanic, I check black, because she grew up in an all black neighborhood. And so that's how she identifies, right? So she, she considers her race or ethnicity much more a, a social construct, right, than, um, than, than looking more at like the biological ancestry or, or um, so anyway, um, as, epidemi as epidemiologists especially, I think it's important to learn and, and recognize this, um, you know, when the associations that you find for disease and race don't necessarily make sense that it may not necessarily be the data, or may be the data, the way that the survey was built out and put forth. Mm -hmm. So I didn't mention it, but the title of this talk was Conceptualizing and Measuring Race, Ethnicity, and Racism for Social Epidemiology. And that's important here because what you're saying is that um, her social context is really important in meaningful ways for her life. And that's what we think about with social epidemiology. Right. So we're not so much, in, we are interested in all factors, but we're particularly interested in being able to explain how social contexts and social relations influence health disparities. And so here, this example that you gave beautifully illustrates that. Are there any other questions or thoughts? I just want to sort of pause for a moment. Um, and then self-report is often considered the gold standard for assessing race and ethnicity. And I believe that's true in many circumstances, but it is not true in all circumstances. Okay, so first of all, we could ask the question, what is self-reported race or ethnicity? Is it um, when we give people a list of particular categories and ask them which one best reflects their identity? Is it simply an open-ended question about what is your um, ancestry? Um, so I mean, there are there's not a yes or no per se, right? These are gray area questions that I would say we need to think about each time we go to collect data, which will uh, allow us to get at the meanings of race that are most relevant for the project that we're doing. Um, and then there are certain circumstances where self-report is actually less meaningful than other ways of assessing race and ethnicity, such as what other people think your race or ethnicity is, right? 
right? So that might be a better way to capture how others treat you, is to capture how others perceive your race or ethnicity. So we've all heard the term race as a social construct. And in public health, we often think of only one connotation of this statement, and that is the first one, which is the essence of race is that it is not biological. Um, notice that I said the essence of race. So that is not me. Mean, that means that there can be elements of race that we associate with biology. Um, the second connotation is the piece that we don't address enough in public health, and we certainly don't address it directly enough in terms of measurement, and that is that race is actually meaningful, um, and that that meaning comes from social factors, right? So if we want to capture race, the ways that we need to go about capturing it need to be tied to its relevance in a social setting or due to social and political factors. That's, that's the piece of race as a social construct that I think we're really still missing in a lot 